Hey, Grandma, don't be afraid because I'm right here beside you, okay? Oyoung, it's pulmonary infection. Dr. Oyoung, here's the x ray. Chen Jin? Hmm? <gasps> Look at this. <sighs> Granny? <sighs> Granny, it's me, Oh Young. Can you hear me right now? <sighs> Don't be scared, okay? We're all here for you, as well as Cheng Jun. Just relax. We'll do everything to help you recover, okay? Cheng Jin, hmm? in this kind of situation, your grandpa shouldn't be here. Hmm. hmm. Grandpa? You can see that grandma is pretty stable right now. How about you go home for the meantime? Hey, Dad. This hospital room is different. Let's go home now. I'll take you for lunch first, then I'll take you home afterwards. I'm not going anywhere. I want to stay here with your mother. Wherever she is, that's where my home is. Chang Jin, how about this? Just take your grandpa to the doctor's quarter, and I'll call the oncology department now mm -hmm. to check if they can provide mm -hmm. us an extra bed. Grandpa, what do you think? Dad, please listen to Miss Lin. This is it, Grandpa. So this is the doctor's quarters. Anyway, you can rest here for a while. I'll just go and check on the status of the extra bed, okay? Hey, Jin Jin. Yeah? Can I ask you something? Does this hospital have better patient rooms, such as single rooms? <sighs> yes, we do. But that kind of single room is expensive, Grandpa. And the fees... Ah. I'm sure that we can afford it, all right? Just do as I say. Book one of those for her. However, you cannot let your grandma know that we paid a lot of money for the room. She's been frugal all her life. If she finds out, for sure she'll never agree. Grandpa, why don't we just forget that, huh? Ah, let's just make the best of what we have. As you can see, she's very uncomfortable, right? Let's make it easy for her. I know, but Grandpa... You've saved this money for so long. You worked hard for it. I think you should keep it to yourself. Let me just talk to Director Xiao and... Can you just please do what I tell you? I know that you're really tired now. Please don't make this hard for yourself. And don't even bother your superiors. I know your grandma doesn't have much time. Well, as for the money, it's of no use to me. I've been through a lot in my life, and I've learned so much when I was young. Back when I was still part of the army, there were bullets everywhere, and I've seen way too much death for one lifetime. Anyway, you don't need to worry about me, all right? Do you understand? I've already made up my mind. We will take good care of her, and we'll give her a simple funeral. I think, instead of spending all of the money to buy her an expensive grave or urn after she passes away, why don't we use that money to give her everything she needs while she's still alive? She deserves nothing but the good things in this world, and I just want to comfort her until the end. So what do you think, huh? Oh, grandson, don't cry. You cannot cry here. Now go. Go. Take care of your grandma. Okay? Go. Come on. Don't cry. Go. Quick. Go. Do as I say. say about your new room anyway you can just relax here all right I'll sleep right next to you and I'll be here every day 
Do you like that? <sighs> Junjun. I understand it now. Her condition doesn't look good. Yeah. It's not looking good. It's already in the advanced stage. Can you think of anything else that we can do? <sighs> Treatment isn't the best solution. It'll just increase the degree of her suffering. Dad, you wouldn't think that we neglected Grandma, would you? Do you think we made some mistake with her treatment? Oh, hey, that's enough. What's in the past is in the past. There is no point in dwelling on it. And what really matters now is that we have to think of a way for her to leave more peacefully. And with much less pain. You are right. Hmm. Grandpa. What are you doing out here? Dad, what do you think about it? Your decision here matters the most. My son, I agree with you. What matters right now is not her treatment. What's more important for me is that your mom will leave peacefully. Dad, you're so clear-headed. At this time, lots of family members are already panicking. It's just... letting you take care of this whole thing by yourself Makes me feel guilty now, as your son. How can you say something like that? Please don't say that again, do you understand? Then, Dad... Does... Mom know... Does she know what's going on here? She does. She knows it better than anyone. So she understands that? Yes, she does. These past few days at home, she took out a bunch of old photos of our family. She went through all of our things, looked at them, and started organizing everything. Did she ever tell you if there was something that she ever regretted not doing in her life? Or if there was something that she wanted to resolve? These past few days, she's been mostly worried that you wouldn't come back here. But now that you're finally back, she's more worried now about June's marriage. I just told her that there's nothing to worry about her grandson. Hmm. Other than that... Dad... I already talked to the hospital now that I'm back for good. Don't worry about it, my son. After you left us to help in Africa, you know your mom and I never blamed you for it. We were happy for you. We were really proud of you. And that being said, you shouldn't think that you owe your mom and I anything in return. All right? Anyway, let's not talk about that. And Junjun. Yes? Now as for you, you took over for your dad. Over the past years, he's been gone. You've always been by our side the whole time. Supporting a family at a very young age. It may have looked like we were taking care of you, but you should remember how much comfort you've given your grandparents. I've heard others say how well you're doing at the hospital. Don't you know how important that is for grandparents and parents alike? Developing your personal and professional skills is better than inheriting wealth. Well, you two are successful. That's why your grandma and I are so happy for you. We're very proud of you. So, Junjun? Yeah. Your grandma's concern about your marriage is just her concern alone. I'm not really worried. A man like you will soon find someone. And that's why you shouldn't feel pressured about it, okay? Okay. It wasn't easy at all, and you've been through a lot. But always keep this in mind. Don't forget that in my eyes, you both are still young. You still lose control when faced with trouble. My advice is that Never lose control about anything. So from this day forward, no matter how hard it is, you have to do what your grandma wants. Let her go as peacefully as possible. <sighs> For years we lived together, but now we don't have much time left. <sighs> Once both grandma and I are gone from this world, we want you to bury us together, do you understand? Just get a simple ceramic urn and put both our ashes together. We don't need a grave, neither a tombstone. Just find some place by the water and bury us there. Because running water is just like memories. That's why when there's water, there are always memories. Oh, come on. Grandpa, why would you bring that up? Aren't you only talking about Grandma here? <laughs> oh, silly child. Grandma and Grandpa are already the same person. Besides, there's a good chance, right? There you go. I just said it. Anyway, forget about it. Also... I don't want us shouting, crying, or worrying about this matter. There are things that one should think clearly, see clearly, and say clearly, rather than dwelling on it. Understood? Hmm. 
We got it, Grandpa. Grandma Cheng isn't doing so well. Cheng Jun's having a hard time. Mm. Lately, Cheng Jun had so much to deal with. Things at the hospital and also at his home. We should try and help him whenever we can. What we can really do now is to comfort him more. Wang Bo and I will work harder so that he can spend more time with his grandma. Mm. By the way, I told my mom about our plans. Our family wants to help us out and we'll pay the down payment using our money. And my mom agrees with it. Did you tell your parents? I've been busy lately. I haven't told them. Oh. Let me do it. <sighs> Honey, mm. once I'm already gone, please donate my body to the hospital. What? Grandma, why would you want to do that, huh? It's not right. Besides, I don't agree. Mom. Why would you think of such a thing? I'm sorry. We can't do that. <laughs> All of you are doctors, right? Then why are you so conservative? Grandma, we're not being conservative, okay? Besides, we just can't do that. I don't agree, and Dad won't agree either, right? Mm. My organs are not in good condition. Except my corneas. Aside from that, Students can use them for their dissection. In that way, they can get more practice. And they'll learn a lot. So they can save more lives in the future. Honey, how can you think of such things? We cannot let you do that, all right? But I've made up my mind. There's nothing you can do to change my decision. What I want to know from you is... When can you make up your minds? But, but Grandma, just what do you mean by that? Once I'm gone, there's going to be just three men left in our home. And not even a single woman. Tell me, how can I rest peacefully with that? Always do your own thing. Just stop following me around. There's no point in it. These days I'm really super busy. I have no time to write. Dr. Chung's grandma's critical, so I have to work extra hard. Grandma Chung is critical? Yeah. Uh, well then, would I be able to visit her? Go for it. <laughs> I think that having a girlfriend right now just seems hopeless for me, Dad. It's all up to you. <laughs> <laughs> After your mother passed away, I decided to spend my life all by myself. But your grandma's situation brought me and Linsa together again. I looked inside my heart, and even if I never betrayed Linsa... After we got separated, she never got married. And I felt guilty about it. Oh. Oh, but Dad, mm. tell me. Is there... Is there still a place in your, in your heart for... For head nurse Lin? Yes. Hmm. And now that I'm back here for good, I want to take some time for our relationship and see hmm. if we can start over again. <laughs> Dad, I, I support you. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Chung? Hey! What, what are you doing here? Did you come here to see a patient or for Zhao Chung? I heard that your grandmother was sick, so I decided to come here and visit you. Come on, you didn't have to do that. Uh, Junjun, who is she? Oh, Dad. This is Miss Tang Tang, a publishing house editor. And Miss oh. Tang, meet my dad. Oh, hello, Mr. Chung. Hello there. I'm Chung Ming Yi. Miss Tang, isn't it? Yes. Are you here to interview Dr. Jun? Oh, of course not. I just came here to see his grandmother. Oh, well, Miss Tang, if that's the case, then... Then let's go in. Please, come in.
Grandma, I brought a friend here. She really wants to see you. Who is it? Hello, Grandma. My name is Tang Tang. I'm a friend of Dr. Chung. Ah. Finally, it's a girl. <laughs> Come here. Oh, sure. Sit. Ming Yi. Yes? Get the lady something to drink. Sure, it's no okay. problem. Thank you. You are. Tong Tong. Jin <laughs> Jun. Yeah? You have such a lovely girlfriend. And you didn't even tell me this. Well, what is there to tell you about? <laughs> You're silly. He's heartless. Don't mind him, all right? <laughs> Miss Tong. Let's chat. Have some tea first. Thank you, thank you. Ah, oh, let's have a little chat, all right? Sure. So tell me about you and Jin Jun. How did you two meet each other? Um, actually, Dr. Chung has an intern who signed the book contract under a publishing house, and I'm his editor, so I come to the hospital often. Eventually, we just got to know each other here. So you're a publishing editor? Yes. Oh, I didn't expect this. You're very talented. <laughs> That's great. You flatter me, Grandma. <laughs> So now you and Jun Jun have been together for quite some time now. Hey, wait a second. No, Grandma. The further this conversation goes, the weirder it's starting to sound. How does it sound weird? Are you still not together yet? <sighs> <sighs> Do you get along well with this young man? Uh, we're getting along well. Um, it's been a while already. More than a month now. Uh, not too long, you know. <sighs> He's got some problems, just in case you haven't noticed it. Actually, this young man, his problem with women is that he's very slow. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like his father. <sighs> That's why you have to say everything directly to him. Do you understand? Oh, yes, I do. Grandma, I'm a very straightforward person. I'm always direct about everything. Uh, that's good, then. I really like that kind of person. <laughs> Jin Jin? Yeah? She's a really nice catch. Well, you better treat her properly. What? <laughs> oh, sure. Sure, I'll do it. <laughs> I got it, all right? <laughs> all right. All right. Chun, how could you be like that? Didn't you see how happy your grandma was? Just go along, even if it's not true. But I didn't see anything. Miss Tang. Yes? Sorry about that. No problem. Well, Jun Jun's grandmother's greatest wish is that he finds a girlfriend as soon as possible. Dad. And it looks like she likes you a lot. Are you two already together? Dad, it's enough. It's already embarrassing. We'll talk about it, okay? Okay, okay. Goodbye, Ben. Bye, it's Bye. a pleasure. Well, they are... <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. And do I look like a stranger to you? Hey, actually, we don't even know each other Says that well. Who? We've met lots of times. Sure, I guess you're pretty nice then. You just said you and I were together, and my grandma will definitely think that... that you're my girlfriend, and if we ever slip up with this, then... At least your grandma was happy, am I right? Right. Then I guess I should thank you, huh? There you go again. Don't forget that we're together now. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking if we'll pursue this relationship, it might just work out. Huh? <laughs> Let me walk you out. Dr. Chung? Yes? I really like you. I know this isn't the best time to say this. You've got a lot going on with your family, and you don't have time to think. But this is the way I am, and I'm just saying what's on my mind. I really hope you can consider me. But Miss Tang, Tang, Tang... Honestly, I'm not as great as you think I am. And we really haven't known each other for all that long. Sure, we've talked before, but not about anything deep. <laughs> uh, so that means... I really don't know you yet. You can take your time to get to know me. Uh, I have so many things to think of right now, and I don't have time for a relationship. Just do your thing. I'll wait for you. Just look at it this way, all right? I think we're not a match. 
Chung Jun, just give me a chance first, and give yourself a chance too, okay? <laughs> right now I see how much a stubborn person you are. That's right, I'm stubborn. If I like you, then I like you. I do things based on how I really feel. If I feel something, then it won't go. All right, all right, all right. Have it your way. But let's be clear with our situation. We'll start this relationship by just being friends. Sounds good? Mm. Then let's leave it at that. We have a deal now, so I'll see you later. You can get back to work. <laughs> hey, wait! <sighs> Miss Tang said she wanted to go see Grandma Chung. I said, go ahead. I didn't think about it. But when she came back, she had suddenly become Dr. Chung's girlfriend. But if Grandma Chung finds out that Dr. Chung was lying, wouldn't she become sad? Yes, that's also lying, right? But Miss Tang really does like Dr. Chung. But Dr. Chung doesn't like her at all. In the end, it's still lying. But if they explained the situation to Grandma Chung, she'd still be disappointed. Hey, Dr. Oyoung. What do you think we should do about this? I think that's a good question. Actually, I don't know what to do. I'm just like you guys. These past few years I've wondered, what do these patients think and what do they really need when they're approaching their deaths? Is it for us to save their lives? Or is it to have their family members by their side? To comfort them? But Cheng Jun did what he did because he had no choice. He just hopes that when his grandmother leaves, she'll be at ease. Mm. Whenever we face a patient who's about to die, I really feel sad for them. I just want to tell them that in their last moments here on Earth, they should stay happy. Me too. Oftentimes I see families using all kinds of medicines and machines in order to save their loved ones, but those will just make it harder for the patient. So I have no idea if doing that is the right thing or not. Dr. Oyoung, could it be that death is the only release for this kind of patient? Well, in my honest opinion, near-death patients need their loved ones more than hospital machines. Before I had this patient, who was 22 years old, he was sent here after a car accident. For more than three hours, the hospital wouldn't let anyone come in and visit him in the ICU. Only one family member can visit for just five minutes, only after two hours. In the end, we weren't able to save him and he died. The family members were really upset because they thought in his last moments, the patient wasn't able to see them or talk to them before he died. That's why, for all those near-death patients, what doctors like us should really do is to help them, instead of trying to save them. But then, Dr. Oyoung, how is that we're able to lessen the patient's suffering? Is it still necessary for emergency treatment? Of course that's very important. We'll save them if we can. Nobody's willing to just stand by and watch their loved one pass away. But as for those patients who already have those terminal illnesses, or for those who can't be saved through treatment, using those hospital machines to extend their lives will only cause their suffering even more. Aside from what I mentioned, near-death patients are often very dehydrated. Their circulation's poor, they can't swallow food properly. That's why their bodies feel cold. They're more damp compared to other people. We often think that they just feel cold, so we give them a blanket to keep them warm. However, even if we only put a light blanket on their hands and feet, they'll just find it very heavy. They can't stand it. Give the patient a lighter blanket. Respiratory failure causes them to have trouble breathing, so giving oxygen might be our choice. But these patients have already lost the ability to utilize oxygen. So the best thing to do is turn on a fan or simply open a window in order for the room to be well ventilated. Then you can give the patient morphine or some other opiate or synthetic narcotic. These patients won't be able to eat or drink if they have a hard time swallowing, so lots of families will use a tube to give them food and water. But the truth is, near-death patients won't feel hunger. On the contrary, continuous dehydration and malnutrition will eventually cause their ketone bodies to accumulate, which results into a natural painkiller that will make them feel numb. However, if we give them even a little bit of glucose during this time, the painkilling effect will be lost. Feeding the patient will cause them to vomit, or the food might eventually cause them to get choked. And if the patient struggles and doesn't cooperate, then there will be no way that they can die quietly. Although infusion somehow relieves dehydration, it has negative side effects like swelling and more pain. The patient is having a hard time eating. Head Nurse Lin, should we intubate her now? No. We know 56% of patients are conscious a week before death while the rest are drowsy, but never in a single case has it happened that they were comatose or completely unable to communicate with others. That's why family members should take this opportunity to talk to their sick loved ones and not wait until it's too late. But these are just some of my personal views. As for what we should do, I can't tell you exactly what it is. The only thing you can do is slowly understand what I mean during your internship. 
Did Cheng Min Yi go and talk to you already? Uh, not yet. <sighs> That's fine. Once he figures it out, he will finally come to you. And once you finally get better, if he doesn't come to me, then I'll go to him. I don't think I'll get any better. But what you're saying now makes me happy. Anyway, once I'm gone, if he still doesn't come to you, just go to him. Just do what I told you, all Auntie, right? Auntie, please don't talk that way. <sighs> You're all done? Yeah, gotta get going. You know, you also have to rest, okay? If you go on like this, you might collapse. You should talk. Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm tougher than you. Hello? Dr. Chung, your grandma's condition has gotten worse. What? <laughs> Dad! Grandpa! Director. Director. <sighs> I'm afraid she won't make it any further. All of her organs have begun to fail. You should discuss what to do afterwards. I'm going to check on her. What should we do? Should we donate her body? What do you think of that, huh? I can accept it as a doctor. But I cannot accept it as a son. Right. That's also how I feel about it. So how about... We discuss this again with Grandma, huh? That's pointless. Your Grandma would just insist on that request until the end. And Grandpa? What's his stand about this? He agrees with it. <sighs> Dad, I'm not trying to persuade you. You're aware that when someone's dying, they don't feel anything. It's like her soul is already... Please don't say it. <sighs> Let me think about it first. It's acceptable for someone whose life is about to end. But it's really hard to accept for their loved ones. I've always been a doctor all my life, and I've saved countless lives before. But I can't even save the life of my own mother. But even if I can't save my own mother's life, I can't just stand there and watch as my own mother's body's donated. It hurts me a lot. I really can't take it. Increase the oxygen. Did you hear that? What happened? Chengju, what? What are you doing? You cannot do that. Do as I say. Dad, do as I say. Do as I say, okay? Right now, there's no point in giving her oxygen. Everyone step back, please. Step back, all right? Get out of the way. Give her some room. Hold on. What? Just step back, okay? Give Grandma some room. Let her see a bit better, okay? Auntie's awake now. Grandma? <gasps> Grandma? Mom? Grandma, it's Jun Jun, Grandma. How are you feeling now, huh? We have an agreement. Donate my body. Don't forget, all right? And you... Take care of Ling, sir.
honey. When you get there, please don't panic. Just wait for me. I'll be there soon. <laughs> Director. Intimate. Dad. <laughs> Grandma. Grandma. Grandma, please don't leave us, Grandma. Grandma, quick. Chug, we have to save her now. Chug, Someone Chug, get a defibrillator. We have to save my Chug, grandma. Please, please. Calm my down. Mom, my mom, quick. We have to let her go. Let her go. Need to calm my down, Chuck. Come on, hurry. That won't help anyone, Chuck. Nothing has happened to my grandma. You really need to understand the situation. How can your grandma leave in peace if she's seeing you like this? Do you think your grandma will be happy with this? Let us show our respects to the donor. First bow. Second bow. Third bow. Dinner's ready. Nurse Lynn, you should take a rest, but let's have dinner first. Dad! Grandpa! Dinner's ready! Okay. Dad, let's eat. Go 
anyway. Please don't worry about me. You can go back to work, or just do what you have to do. I will be all right. I can handle myself. Hey, Dad. Let's eat now. Sure, sure. Dad. Hey. Don't be so sad now. You need to learn self-control. She's your grandma and my mom. How can I move on if you can't? I know. Don't worry, Dad. There's something I wanted to discuss with you. Sure. From now on, can you call Head Nurse Lynn as your auntie instead? Huh? After your mom left us, I really felt downhearted for a while. So to raise my spirits, I went to Africa. It seems silly to me now. I was only escaping. Huh. You know, I get your point. There's nothing wrong if you want to escape. But now I regret that decision. I should have spent more time with your grandma. When I first heard that she was sick, I thought about coming back early. But things right over there... We get it. We get it, okay? I never imagined that she would be gone so quickly. I've done a terrible job in being her own son. Me too. I've done a terrible job as a grandson. Your grandma was right. We should start over again. Well, medicine is indeed a practical profession. Hmm. As you know, we're busy every day dealing with all our patients, right? We don't really need to write those papers or become a director someday. We can just keep on caring for our patients. We will save the ones that we can save and comfort the ones that we cannot save anymore. Right. Right? Hey, wait a second. I think we've gotten off topic here. Weren't we just talking about, about me calling head nurse Lynn auntie instead? What's that supposed to mean? I'm sure you know what that means, so stop playing dumb. So then, what do you think? You should have known it already. I already said that I'd support you. Besides, that's what Grandma wanted as well, right? Hmm. Mm hmm <sighs> Oh. <laughs> Head nurse, I mean, uh, Auntie Lin. You heard everything we said, right? Uh, I'll just say it. Jun has finally agreed. <sighs> Thank you. Wait, wait. Why are you thanking me? I should be thanking you instead. From now on, you have to take care of this muddled-headed old man. But there's still something that I still don't understand. Why did you have to wait for him for so many years? Is my dad really that amazing? <laughs> Actually, I never intended to wait for him. After he and your mom got married, I switched jobs so that I could forget him. All throughout these years, I also really wanted to get married. But unfortunately, it never seemed to work for me. Eventually, I realized when someone's in your heart, it's really hard to replace him with someone else. <laughs> but it looks like the fates are with us, and we still ended up together again after all. <laughs> <laughs> well then, congratulations to the both of you. Hey, hold on. How about we just tell Grandpa about this news? He's not feeling well now, and I think this might cheer him up. No, tomorrow. I still have to take her, your Auntie Lynn, home. Oh. <laughs> Shall we go ahead? Okay. Bye. Bye.
的世界，只剩一点，我还会为爱勇敢一点，再爱一点，再爱一点，紧紧拥抱这个世界。如果心跳可以听见，就能听懂我爱的宣言，请让我陪在你的身边。发现爱没有白天黑夜，我相信真爱会永远，是心跳，是直觉。爱的信念不会熄灭，勇往直前，不顾一切。如果时间只剩一天，我还会为爱勇敢一点，再爱一天，再爱一遍，紧紧拥抱这个世界。如果心跳。可以听见，就能听懂我爱的宣言，请让我陪在你的身边，在你的世界。如果时间只剩一点，我还会为爱勇敢一点，再一点，再一点，紧紧拥抱这个世界。如果心跳可以听见，就能听懂我爱的宣言，请让我。在你的身边，再爱爱你的世界 ，Love forever。